Chapter ninety eight of the Holiest of All by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Tenth section Hebrews chapter eleven verses one to forty. The fullness of faith. Chapter ninety eight Faith the sense for the unseen. Hebrews chapter eleven verses one to three. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the proving of things not seen. For therein the elders had witness borne to them. By faith we understand that the worlds have been framed by the word of God, so that what is seen hath not been made out of things which do appear. The previous chapter closed with the solemn lesson, There is no alternative, believing or drawing back. There is no safety or strength for the Christian, but to be strong in faith. There is no way of pleasing God, of abiding in his presence and favour, but by faith. If any man draw back, my soul hath no pleasure in him. And so, after the teaching of the epistle as to what God hath done, we are now to see that for our enjoyment of its power and blessing, but one thing is needed, the fullness of faith. It will be shown us how this is the key to the life of all God's saints and to all that God did for them. The writer begins by a general statement of what faith really is in its nature and action. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the proving of things not seen. Faith is the spiritual faculty of the soul which deals with the spiritual realities of the future and the unseen. Just as we have our senses through which we hold communication with the physical universe, so faith is the spiritual sense or organ through which the soul comes into contact with and is affected by the spiritual world. Just as the sense of seeing or hearing is a dormant power till the objective reality, the light or the sound, strikes it, so faith in itself is a sense with no power beyond the possibility or capacity of receiving the impressions of the eternal. It is as an empty vessel which wants to be filled with its unseen contents. It is only when the eternal realities draw near and exercise their power that faith becomes and is the substance of things hoped for, the foundation which they lay in the soul, the proof or conviction of things unseen, the convincing power with which they give evidence and proof of their own supernatural existence. Footnote the two words, substance and proof, are used both in the objective and subjective sense. The word for substance properly means the foundation, and is used of the real nature of a thing as opposed to appearance. So, in chapter 1, verse 3, of the substance of God, the divine essence. Or it is used of the confidence which knows that it rests on a sure foundation. So, in chapter 3, verse 14, the beginning of our confidence... It is of importance to hold fast the connection between the two meanings. So the word proof or conviction from the verb used in passages as the spirit shall convince of sin and often elsewhere of reproof, chiding, means both the conviction of guilt or the conviction of a truth which is brought from without and the subjective conviction which comes when one submits and allows himself to be convicted. It thus means both the means of proof and the proof itself. See Second Timothy chapter three verse sixteen, Scripture profitable for reproof. End of footnote. Faith, as a dormant faculty, is the capacity for receiving this communication. Faith, as an active power, is what it is in virtue of the overshadowing of the invisible. The invisible takes the initiative and wakens faith. Faith receives the impression and seeks for ever fuller union with it. Faith is thus much more than trust in the word of another. That trust is of extreme importance as its initial exercise, but the word must only be the servant leading in to the divine truth it contains, the living person from whom it comes. To deal too exclusively with the word as the ground of faith will lead to a faith that is more intellectual than spiritual, a faith that, as the church so universally shows, rests more in the wisdom of men, in the power of reason, than in the power of God. We need to be persuaded very deeply that faith is not only a dealing with certain promises, but an unceasing spiritual intercourse with the unseen world around us. 
just as in breathing, our lungs, or in seeing our eyes, hold themselves open to receive unceasingly from the air or the light what they without ceasing in the literal sense press upon us, so faith is the unceasing reaching out heavenward of that spiritual sense to which things future and unseen reveal themselves as near and present, as living and powerful. Faith must in the spiritual life be as natural, as unceasing, as our breathing and seeing when we are doing our ordinary work. For therein the elders had witness born to them. Of Abel, we read, he had witness born to him that he was righteous, God bearing witness in respect of his gifts. And Enoch, he had witness born to him that he had been well-pleasing to God. And so it is said of all, verse 39, these all had witness born to them through their faith. Faith does not depend for its blessing on the intensity of its effort. The unseen world, the eternity that surrounds us, is all filled by the living God. And to the faith that opens itself heavenward, he bears witness. Let us be sure of this. Faith can grow into firm and full assurance. It finds its confidence not in itself, but in God. Let us count upon it. The faith that seeks for the eternal will be met by God and have the witness borne by himself that God counts us righteous, that we are well-pleasing in his sight. By faith we understand that the worlds have been framed by the word of God, so that what is seen hath not been made out of things which do appear. This visible world is to man his great temptation to forget God. Faith is the eye with which he can see God in all, which makes every part of it the transparent revelation of the nearness and goodness of God. By faith we understand that all was framed by God. By faith we see divinity and omnipotence in all, so that what is seen is known as made out of things that do not appear. The invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, even his eternal power and Godhead. Faith sees his superscription on every part of his handiwork, sees it all pervaded by the living God. Surrounded by the things that perish and pass away, it yet stands in the midst of eternity, it knows itself allied to the unchangeable one. The world, instead of being a hindrance, becomes a help in revealing the everlasting God, and faith finds its life and its delight and its ever-increasing strength in meeting everywhere the God who delights to bear witness of himself to them that seek after him. Faith is mostly thought of as a power by which we grasp the heavenly things, and we weary ourselves in vain attempts to do so. No, faith is the substance, the substructure, that the divine things lay in me, the proof that they give in me of their actual reality. Just as the light of the sun is its own evidence and proof, so with the light of God. The more we see this, the more confident will our hope be that they will prove themselves to us, and the more meek and patient and humble will be the spirit in which we wait for their self-revelation. The rules for the strengthening of faith are thus very simple. Regard the unseen world as an actual existing kingdom of divine truth and power, which seeks to conquer and get possession of and bless you. Accept the measure of faith there is within you as the proof of its existence and operation, the pledge of a fuller revelation. Accept all that is revealed of it in the word as a finger-post to wake the longing and to show the way to the full possession. Set the heart open in holy separation from the world. In meditation and adoration and expectation, the unseen world can become more real and more near than the seen. Nothing can be a proof of anything but that which partakes of the nature of the thing proved. Thus it is with faith and the spiritual world. End of chapter 98